Well, a lot of people lost a lot of money in the stock market a few years ago. But with the constant roller coaster, how do you know if you're losing money just because of the bad economy or if it's due to the acts of a financial advisor? Here with the answers, we have attorney Phil Harding from Harding & Associates, who's here to answer our legal questions every Friday. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, you know, before we get into, you know, that, that whole market issue, I, I want to update your resume because we've, we've told people many times that you've been named top 100 trial lawyers in Colorado for four years in a row, but sure. I just heard it's five years in a row now. It Congratulations. is five. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate awesome. that. We're going to have to widen the doorways around here to get you through. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would be getting a big head if I were you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm honored to, uh, um, to be you know, for five years in a row. In that it's, category, it's, yeah, that's yeah. a big deal. It Top is. 100, considering how many attorneys there are, trial attorneys in Colorado. So way to go. Thank you. So we're talking about the stock market. You hear a lot of people say, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know if anyone who said they made money over the past few years, but this isn't just the country club crowd talking. It's everyone. Yeah, not really. Um, you know, many of our viewers have been saving for years and years to build up this nest egg for retirement, and many of them have seen a drop in this nest egg, mm -hmm. um, even when the market is up. And so they're wondering what's going on. Yeah, so losing money, I mean, how, how do you determine, uh, how, how can you help us determine what's going on? Well, let's start off with some basics here. Okay. There are really two types of people that handle investments. Um, first of all, many of these people think that they owe a special duty to the investors, to you and me, who entrust money to them. Um, so let's talk about them. There's a stockbroker and there's also what's known as an investment advisor. Okay. And generally, 99% of the time, that's the kind of people that you're going to run into. And let's talk about a stockbroker. First of all, a stockbroker gets a commission on each trade that's made. That's mean, that means when he buys or sells something for you. Also, these stockbrokers may have many clients. Um, now, you need to know about a stockbroker. They have no duty to call the investor, to call you when their investment is crashing. Really? True. And um, when we get to the next one, we're going to see a little bit more about that. And there's only a duty to sell what's known as suitable investments. And we're going to talk about suitable investments here just in a moment. But that is what a stockbroker is. All right. So what is the difference then between the stockbroker and the investment advisor? Well, let's talk a little bit about what an investment advi advisor is. And the in investment advisor really, um, he gets a percentage on the portfolio. Remember the stockbroker, I said every single trade. Every trade. Okay. Right. Whether, Whereas, you, whether you buy or sell, they're making something. Well, the investment advisor, right. Okay. Um, what happens is every quarter they take a little bit out and it generally comes out to about one or two percent. Um, they shouldn't have as many clients. They also have a duty that goes beyond just the sale because remember they're get charging one flat fee over the year to watch out for that. They can't be motivated by a commission like a stockbroker and also they have the same thing, a duty to only recommend trades that are suitable investments. So, so when you say they have a duty, is there someone who holds them accountable? There is. Okay. There, there are different organizations, um, and there are licensing uh, requirements for stockbrokers and also investment advisors. Okay. But let's kind of go into this. And generally, um, when an investor goes to either a stockbroker or an investment advisor, they fill out a worksheet, and it shows how much risk they want to take. For example, if someone says, hey, I want to make a lot of money really fast, then you need to know that you can lose a lot of money really fast. Right, so they're definitely going to be the conservative types and the, the more liberal types when it comes to investing in that risk. But you know, how do we determine who is going to be a trustworthy advisor for us to turn to? Yeah, and that's, that's a very interesting question. Um, you also look at, um, with an investment advisor, let's say someone is nearing the retirement age and they've lost about 30 percent they need to talk to an attorney but let's talk about some key questions to talk to either brokers or advisors about first of all you need to ask and these are specific questions for example will you call me if my investment decreases in value um, you want to know how many other clients that they have um, also, a major question is, are these investments suitable for me? Right. That, you know, that goes to what you were saying. Are you, you, know, are you a kind of a high risk person or a low risk, right? Exactly. You want to go and find out if they have insurance, if they want to have what's known as SIPC, and that stands for the Security Investor Protection Corporation. You want to ask about, um, are there any restrictions on getting out of investment? Because you don't want to go into something and then find out you're stuck in this investment for five years, oh, wow. whether it goes up or down. And sometimes that yeah, happens. Yeah, I guess I just assumed you could bail out whenever you wanted, but not a so. Huh? A lot of times you can. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that you want to find out is, how 
ask the broker or ask the investment advisor, how do you get paid? Do you get paid on every single transaction? Do you get paid over the year? And what are the total costs? Because it may be just it may be more than that initial commission. You also want to find out when they are talking about, for example, I'm selling you this stock, does he get something, does he get a commission from someone else? Is there else? an extra like a kickback or a, whatever? A I kicker know. on that, yeah. right. Um, and it's important to go over these different questions with them. And it's not just for people that have their portfolios right now, but these are main questions that people can ask if they are starting their investments. And it's so important for people to start their investments right now because they grow and grow and grow. Sure. And even though we're talking about this, I mean, generally investments are safe, make sure that someone has insurance and go through all of that. But the sooner you start saving, the bigger your nest egg is going to be down the road. Of course. Now, when it comes to you know checking up on the broker, I think a lot of people uh, have gotten used to being able to do background checks on almost anyone that we, we deal with. Is there a way that can kind of check up on, on a broker or an advisor? There is. There's something that's known as the CRD, or the Central Registry Depository. And the easiest way to do it is just go to Google and look at FINRA, which is F-I-N-R-A, broker check. And it that will light up so that you can look at the broker, you can look at the investment company, and you can see how many complaints have been filed against them. And so you can make a decision there. That's the same thing with doctors and lawyers. You can go and do checks on how many times they have been grieved. But stockbrokers and investment advisors, it's the same thing. Go and look at FINRA broker check, and then just type that in and it'll light it up. You can go in there, look at them and say, gee, I want to put my money in with them, or no, I don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what if it's uh, too late? You know, you've, you've been with an advisor or someone, and you're feeling like something didn't go just right. Is there a way, I mean, can they call you? Can you help them look into it and, and, and help them in any way? Absolutely. We can go over and we can look at their trades. We can look at them and see, were these trades made? Were they authorized to make these trades? Okay. Did they put them in a suitable investment? Did they put them in a high-risk investment? And a lot of times you think, for example, gold stock. Gold is going up. But they get locked into these gold stocks, and these gold stocks can be high risk. And you don't think it is because gold is so, but that's the newest thing that's happening is people are going into these gold stocks, and they're losing a ton. And they say, how can I lose a ton when stocks, you know, when gold's going up? Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Well, that doesn't make sense. I would be asking the same question. Right. So you can help them delve into that, look into it, study it, figure out kind of what happened. Right. And, and dig in, look at individual trades. And even if they don't have the documentation, it's easy for for uh, people like us to go in and order back all of these trades and see what's taken place. Just incredible. And I know a lot of people, you know, they go to our website, they ask you specific questions. I'm sure this came from someone contacting you, and we appreciate that you, you know, bring it on to Colorado's Best and try to educate all of our viewers about it. It's great. It's my well, pleasure. Yeah, if you have any legal questions for Phil, he does want to hear from you. Just go to coloradosbest.tv, look for his photo there, click on it. You can submit your legal questions. He does take the time to answer them all personally. And like I said, he may even address your question right here on Colorado's Best for the good of us all. Well, if you'd like to contact Phil at his office, Harding & Associates, here's the number, 303-762-9500. You can also go online to hlaw.org. Good stuff, Phil. Thank you. Thank you.